It's so great to see Brother Gail able to be in church and uh, trying to get uh, through recovering from major surgery, and I'm glad that he was made it here to the house of the Lord. I want to give you the scriptures so that you can read the Christmas, Christmas story with your family. We had um, asked you to do this, and so if you have your bulletin there, you have a pen, because there's, uh, to, to get the full Christmas story, you have to read in a couple of different places, and I'd like for you to do this with your family at some appropriate time during these Christmas holidays. And so if you have a pen, you can just write down Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And then if you'll skip over to Luke chapter 2, and read verses 1 through 20. And then go back to Matthew and read chapter 2, 1 through 15. So it's Matthew 1, 18 through 25, then Luke 2, 1 through 20. And then Matthew chapter 2, verses um, 1 through 15. And so, God bless you. Thank God. And you know, there's been a lot said about uh, Christmas, about the Christmas story. And certainly, I think we don't tell it enough. And so, on this day, we're going to spend some extra time just reminding you what this is all about. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 7 says, And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swollen clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of God shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And then Matthew chapter 2 and verse number 1 says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? But we have seen his star and are come to worship him. I just wanted to title this this, this morning, um, Who Would Have Ever Thought? Who Would Have Ever Thought? Who Would Have Ever Thought That a King, a God, Would Be in a Manger? Who Would Have Ever Thought That Wise Men Would Follow a Star to Where Jesus Was? And Who Would Have Ever Sent Angels to Lowly Shepherds That They Would Be and Say That the Savior Was Born? Only God. Because he's the God that knows how to deliver gifts in the most uh, perfect and unique way. Thank God. God is the ultimate gift giver. And of course, um, giving gifts has been uh, a big part of everything that the Word of God is. Because God, uh, you know, every breath that you breathe is a gift from God. And James chapter 1 and verse number 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above and cometh down from the Father of life, in whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. And God, gifts are a big part of Christmas. And a lot of us uh, times, if we're not careful, it's a bad thing because we get so caught up in all of that that we fail to realize the true meaning of Christmas. But uh, that uh, gift giving um, started with God way back in the ultimate he became the ultimate gift giver. And finally, in John chapter 3 and verse number 16, he gave us the ultimate gift for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus was that perfect one. And God, he would become God's gift to the sins of all that could take away the sins of all the world, the Savior of the whole world. And so Christmas is really about God's ultimate gift to mankind, and that is salvation. And really, salvation is typically defined as being delivered from sin, being delivered from ourselves, and being, de being delivered from hell. And so there are some bad things that we are delivered from, but there's also some good things that we're saved to. It's not all just getting rid of the bad, but it's coming into the good. And salvation is really about that. Salvation is about being set free. Thank God. And there are people sitting here today that you can testify that God can set you free. Thank God. Because He brought you out of a, a life of addiction. He brought you out of a life of, of habits that you couldn't break on your own. He brought you out of chains that kept you bound and He set you free. And so the Bible says, For unto us is born this day in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ our Lord. And so a little over 2,000 years ago, he was born, thank God. And when Jesus died on the cross, he paid for every sin that you have ever done and every sin that you will do in the future. He took care of it at the cross. All I have to do is confess my sins. And the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive me of all of my sins. And at this time of the year, 
Thank God, this Christmas song that uh, has really got a brand new meaning to me, and that is that away in a manger. Thank God. When Jesus was born, thank God, a way was born. Thank God, when Jesus was born, hope was born. When Jesus was born, salvation was born. And so thank God for the birth. Thank God, when Jesus came, everything changed. And all of you that Jesus Christ has come into your life, you're a living testimony that when he came into my life, everything changed. Thank God, hope was born. Thank God, a new way was made. Thank God, and everything was forever changed in our lives that we would be able to walk with him and so the true christmas really is the best news of all is that when the angels sang thank god they sang they came with a, a new message for us thank god they came to let us know that things can be better because first god loved us thank god second god wanted to be with us and then God said he was for us. And ultimately he said, I want to be in you. And that's what the Holy Ghost is, is Christ in you. And so it's only um, fitting that Jesus was born in the night because he is the light of the world. And the best time to shine the light is when the night is the darkest. And so he is still the one that can come into the dark lives that we all find ourselves in, dark places in life. And even on this Christmas... Thank God, sometimes people feel dark despair. And Jesus wants to come in and to let you know, thank God, that uh, he can bring hope to a hopeless place. He can bring peace to a troubled life. Thank God. And he really is the one that wants to lead you out of your bondage into something better. read a story about some Navy SEALs that had came to rescue some people that had been long held hostages. And they had been so uh, deceived and... Uh, punished by their oppressors that when the Navy SEALs got there with their guns and things and had fought their way to where these hostages were to set them free, the hostages were afraid of them and they, were not, they wouldn't trust them. They were telling them, come on, we've come here to get you free. And they just couldn't do anything. So finally, one of the Navy SEALs laid down his gun and they were all just laying on the floor because they were so afraid and went over and laid down with them and he came apart with them. Thank God, and put himself in, in their place with them. And then when he got up from there and stood up and he told them to come with him, there was something about that that caused the hostages to get up and to follow them to freedom. And so it is today that was what Jesus Christ has done for every one of us. Thank God, he came to our dark situation. He came to us when we were in a hopeless, despairing place, and suddenly he became one with us. Thank God, he took on flesh. Thank God. And so the old song says it well, standing somewhere in the shadows, you're going to find Jesus. Thank God. He's the only one who cares and understands. Thank God. And he wants to come even to the valley of the shadow of death. Thank God. And he can bring you out of the most despairing situation. Thank God. So whether you're in a downpour or you're in a desert, whether you're in a dungeon or a disease-afflicted body, thank God that crisis doesn't matter to him. What matters, thank God, is you understand that God is in control and that God can help you in your situation today. And so when you cry out to God, he's going to hear you, thank God. And when you uh, bring your troubles to him, he's going to bring peace into your life. And so I've come to kind of tell you that a way was made in the manger. Thank God, a way to be free. Thank God, from fear, a way to be free from your worries, a way to be free from the stresses that even this season can bring you. Thank God, the way for you to be uh, in His presence. Thank God, a way for you to have victory in your life, a way for you to have miracles in your body. I'm thankful that He is our healer. Thank God, a way to be blessed, a way to have your needs met, a way to be able to go from addiction, thank God, to deliverance, from bondage into freedom, thank God, and most of all, that you can have your sins forgiven. So while we're standing today, thank God, so I'm, don't worry about what you can do, thank God. All God wants you to do is what you can do, and then He's going to do the rest, thank God, because He made a way in a manger, thank God. He made a way so that I could confess my sins and they could be forgiven, thank God. He made a way so that I could be forgiven and never to have to bear the load of sin anymore. Thank God. And so all you have to do is just come. Thank God. There's no money to pay. There's no uh, things that you have to do. All you have to just do is to come because God can, can make a way where there is no way. Jesus really is the way. Thank God. And so in this Christmas season, thank God, a way was made in a manger. 
Thank God. And what better way could you celebrate this Christmas time than just letting him wash away all your sins? Thank God, like that song says, and make them white as snow. Praise God. I stand here today, thank God, forgiven. I stand here today redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. It's not by anything that I have done, but it is all about what he has done. Thank God. And so today we celebrate the fact that a Savior came. We celebrate the fact that even today, He's walking through these aisles. He knows your hurts. He knows your troubles. He knows your frustrations maybe that you're going through. He knows all of the disappointments that maybe this time of the year has brought to you. But he wants you to know that really none of that really matters. What really matters is that you just can step into his presence and suddenly all of these things just become strangely dim in the presence of the one that can just speak peace into our lives. And let us know that it's not about what you get at Christmas, thank God, but it's what was given to us at Christmas that really matters. Thank God. And so while we sing a chorus, if you've got a need.